it says, uh, it says in John 12, 44 to 46, Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have of sharing your word, of bringing these morsels to the believers in the house today, Lord, and we pray that you will guide the word where you want it to go and have it the effect that you would want it to have. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're talking about light today. A curious child asks her mom, why are you starting to get some gray hairs with all your dark hair? And seeing this as a teaching moment, the mother tells this little girl, she says, well, young lady, when a daughter does something naughty, one of her mother's hairs turns gray. And the little girl thought about that. And she said, so mommy, why is all of grandma's hair gray? <laughs> you must have been really naughty when you were a little girl. This time of year, neighborhoods are decorated by colored lights. We have the tree up here. Some neighborhoods you drive through and the houses are all covered and, I, and they, the eaves and everything is all covered with lights. And some people compete with each other with Christmas decorations, red lights, blue lights, green lights, all kinds of bright decorations everywhere you look. We don't go all out anymore. A couple of years ago, I bought an artificial tree that has the lights built right into it. You plug it in, you turn a switch, and they come on. She puts a few decorations on there. But we used to go cut the tree down, and that was really laborious. It was smelled like a tree. I mean, you can get spray stuff that smells like a tree and put it on the artificial one. But uh, I would be happy to take a picture of the tree and make a big, long poster size picture of it, wind it up on a Venetian blind, Christmas time comes, pull the blind down, there's your Christmas tree. I would, I would, wouldn't I? I would do that. I would do that. But that's just me. When I was a child, Christmas was all about the presence. Oh, we knew about Jesus, but my focus was on what I was going to get. It wasn't on Jesus. When I was a teenager, my friends and I would go to each other's house. This was in Dubois. We'd walk around town. We'd go to each other's house on Christmas Eve. The mothers all had cookies and brownies and stuff like that. Then we'd go downtown to a theater to a late movie. And then we'd go to midnight mass. We were Catholic back in those days. We'd go up to midnight mass in order to fulfill our religious duty so we didn't have to get up next morning and go, which we were supposed to do. So we'd get, go home and next day we'd participate in the frenzy of present opening. Honestly, back in those days, the best thing about Christmas was not having to go to school for a few days. Uh, I hated school. I did. We went to the Penguin School. We were taught by penguins. But that was the best thing, to stay away from the penguins for a few days. And one of, one of them was my cousin, actually. Part of the joy was in giving presents. But none of it was about honoring God to us, to me, in those days. We didn't do anything to honor God at Christmas time. Of course, Jesus didn't ask us to celebrate his birth. There's discussion about whether his birth was even on December 25th. But we weren't honoring God. We were just after the holiday and after the presents. And the lights and decorations were nice to look at. And we would have thought that we were deprived if there weren't any bright lights. The light was important, just as it is, it is today. The lights are important. People have their, that's what their focus is on, the tree and the lights and the presence and all that stuff. 
But the more important light is Jesus. Sam, look at this. <laughs> if I want an amen, I push that button. <laughs> they got me that for pastor appreciation last year. Jesus comes to us to dispel the darkness of our sin. He comes anytime, not just a certain season. God's perfect gift to us is the light that is Jesus. We're talking about light today. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And here you go. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Talking about light today. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome the light. Because that light is Jesus. The enemy cannot overcome the light. But he does his best to obscure the light. Darkness cannot penetrate light. It can't be done. There's no, nothing that will emit a beam of darkness into a light place. On the contrary, light penetrates darkness. Light, but if this was all dark in here and I lit a candle or a flashlight, it penetrates the dark. <clears throat> the opposite cannot be true. It only, uh, it, the, only, the only reason we have darkness at night is because the world obscures the sunlight. It gets in the way. We're in a shadow. The light is still there. It's still there. Light penetrates darkness. The bright lights of the season will be gone in a few weeks. They will have served their purpose. The beautiful holy light that is Jesus will never be gone. Never. The light of God is eternal. The world needs the light. There's darkness everywhere. I watched with a heavy heart the terrible atrocities that were committed by Hamas in Israel. I watched with a heavy heart the poor Palestinian people picking through the rubble in Gaza. Heavy heart. The world needs the light. Darkness reigns. So many are living in darkness, sin darkness, hate darkness, evil darkness, and we all need the light. <laughs> Matthew 4, 13 to 16. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people, this is verse 16, living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. We each experience that personally because we start out by living in darkness. And when a light dawns is when Christ comes in. And we ask him to be our savior. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that he would be a light to those living in darkness. Those living in the darkness of sin. In other words, to all of us who will receive him, who would have him. We have seen a great light. We have stepped into that light. Some people hide from the light, like a bug under a rock. They don't want the light to reveal what they are doing. Isaiah 60, 1 to 3, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. We have an enemy that would like to keep us in darkness and does his best to do that. 
He never sleeps, he never rests, he never stops. For some, darkness is struggling with an illness, the aches and pains of old age, losing the struggle with failing abilities and entering a nursing home. For some, darkness is the inevitable day when they lose a loved one through death. Whatever is your temptation, that's also your darkness, hatred, greed, not caring about how your actions affect other people, alcohol abuse, selfishness, all the things that Satan, the prince of darkness, brings in to people's lives. Make no mistake, there is darkness inside of people. It is the darkness of sin. How does darkness manifest itself in your life? Sometimes the darkness can be so thick that we have difficulty seeing the mess that sin has made of our lives. There are so many people around us who live in darkness and don't even realize it. Don't even know it. I didn't know it when I was living in darkness. I didn't know it. David's a good example. Adultery, murder, his human frailties were overcome by the light of repentance. David was a repenter. He knew how to do that. Satan was not able to destroy him. He wanted to, he tried to, and Satan is not able to destroy you if you are a child of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The enemy will not prevail against us who are the redeemed of God. Micah 7 and 8, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. I'm talking about light today. The awesome holy light of the gospel overpowers the darkness of the evil one. Psalm 18, 28, you Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. We're all without light until we step into the light. Darkness is mine. Light is of God. We're not talking about candles and light bulbs now. We're talking about spiritual darkness. Until I come in repentance to Christ, until I accept what he did for me on the cross of Calvary. Until I accept that and receive him as Savior, I remain in darkness, I remain in sin. First John 1, 5 to 7, this is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin, all unrighteousness in the King James. We must walk in the light. There's no other way to God. God cannot have the contamination of my sin in his holy heaven. He can't have it there. But he made a way for me to clean up. And that was by the blood of Jesus. Sometimes people prefer the darkness because in the light they see too much or someone else sees too much. They continue in their old ways because they don't like having the light shine on them and, the, and because it will show that their relationship with God is in a terrible state and that they're in serious trouble. John's Gospel says this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men loved the darkness rather than the light for their works were evil. That's in John 3.19. We must be vigilant you can open yourself to the fiery darts of the enemy. 
guard your heart. The Bible says guard your heart. I was a backslider for three years. I wasn't guarding my heart. I allowed my prayer life to lapse. I allowed my scripture life to lapse. And when the storms of life came along, I was like an empty paper bag, blew away because I wasn't practicing my faith and staying in the light. John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, <clears throat> but will have the light of life. Following Jesus is required in order to stay out of darkness. Following Jesus is more than coming to church on Sunday morning. Following Jesus is continuing in the word. Following Jesus is having a two-way prayer life. You know, we make a list of stuff we want God to do for us. We rattle that off and then we say, see you, Lord, see you later, without giving him time to make an impression to speak back to us. You might be the only person that someone will ever hear about the light, about God from. Following Jesus, carrying the gospel into dark places. Amen, Sam? You carried it. You still carry it in dark places. When you carry the gospel, you are carrying the light. You carry what can bring a sinner from eternal darkness into the holy light of the goodness of God. <laughs> Reading again the verse from Isaiah 60, 1 to 3, for emphasis, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The verse reminds us that a new light has come from the Lord and is shining on all people. This new light chases away all shadows and darkness. The closer the light comes to them, the more they will see the darkness in their lives and the more they will feel its warmth and comfort. There will always be those who will stay in the darkness. Blessings of God come with authority. Walking with God requires obedience. Some people will want to be their own authority. It doesn't work that way. I had that attitude until the Holy Spirit got to me and brought the light of the gospel into my life. Isaiah is talking about people from all nations being drawn from the darkness to the light. The prophet says, your sun shall no more go down, neither shall your moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh will be your everlasting light and the days of your mourning shall be ended. That's Isaiah 60 and verse 20. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, John 8 and 12. The prophecies of the Old Testament have been fulfilled. What an impact the light of Christ has had on the darkness in our lives and in the world. But there is still darkness there. It's all around us. Satan is still alive and active. He hasn't been chained up into the pit yet it's coming Jesus is the light this light exposes the dark private corners of our lives that we prefer to keep hidden everything's not as neat and tidy and orderly as we thought sometimes you know everything sometimes there is a mess that needs to be cleaned up and even though we have tried to hide the mess in the dark, darkest and most private corner of our lives, the light of Jesus penetrates everywhere and shows us 
that there is dirt piled up in the corners and it needs cleaning out. Our temptations, secret sins, those faults that we would prefer not to admit to, the way we've treated people that we love, the selfish attitude that we have nurtured, the times we have preferred to look the other way, rather than offer a, a helping hand to someone, the light, Jesus, has come into the world. Not to bring condemnation, but to bring salvation. Not to rub our noses in the dirt of those dark corners, but to sweep them out to bring healing and reconciliation. Repentance is so good. It cleans, it, it cleans everything up. This light is freely yours. Bask in the beauty and warmth of the Son, the Son of God. Jesus is the real light, the genuine light who changes everything. He is forgiveness. He is hope. He is encouragement. He is a word of love. He is strength. He is what you need to bring light into your personal darkness and to help you to bring light into someone else's darkness. He is light to every person who has need of hum superhuman strength to see through the darkness of trouble and sickness. He is the light who guides us along life's journey when we have more questions than we have answers. He is the light that dispels the darkness of guilt with his forgiveness and the darkness of fear when we take our last breath. He is the light of life eternal life. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. I'm going to close with this. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. I wonder in the house today if there are any who have some darkness in your life. Maybe the life, maybe the light of God has never been in your life. Maybe you have never said to Jesus, Lord, I receive you as my Savior and ask you to be the light of my life and ask you to help me be the kind of person you want me to be. Maybe you have never said anything like that to God. I remember the first time I ever did that. Life has never been the same since. <laughs> How well I remember that, that day and that moment. Some people play games with God. I knew, I know a pastor, a friend of mine, pastor, when he was struggling, uh, he was actually sitting in the back pew of a church, stoned. And the pastor came back and said, son, when are you going to stop playing games with God? And he turned his life over to Christ, and he's a pastor now. Do you know Tim Holfoster? That was Tim. Did you ever hear that story? <laughs> He was a rascal before God got a hold of him. We were all rascals. Amen. We're all sinners. So if there's anyone in the house today that you need to come to Christ, maybe you never did. Maybe your relation with him has grown cold. Maybe there's some darkness in your life. I would like to pray with you about that. I'm going to ask everybody to stand. In a few minutes, we'll go downstairs and hog down everything in sight. <laughs> but if you're here today and, and, and you, ha you have need of the light, you have need, it's here. It's freely available. If you have a dark corner in your life, some 
some place in your life that where the light has never been. There's nobody here but us. I'm just going to ask you to step out and come down here and we'll pray for you and ask God to do a work in your life. Maybe maybe a work like he's like you've never known. So while I wait just a moment, if that's you, come on out of your seat, come down here, and we will pray. All right, anybody? Here comes an honest soul. Praise God. Praise God. And another one, and another one. This is awesome. This is awesome. Have you ever asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? You have, but you but you sort of drifted away. I've been there. I've done that. Have you ever asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? But you drifted away from him. How about you? Drifted away. Okay. God, our Father, thank you for these three honest people, Lord, who once confessed their faith to you, Lord, that they that they believed in you and received you as Lord and Savior. And now they're coming back to you, Lord. And I know what that is because I've done it myself. Lord, they're coming back. Oh, dear God, this is so awesome. And this time, Lord, hold them and never let them go, Lord, just like you did me and others, Lord. Hold on to them. I'm going to ask the three of you to just repeat this. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I need you, I need you. As, I've needed you before. as I've needed you before. Need you to be my Savior, Lord. I'm, I'm coming back to you now. Fill my heart with your life and your light, Lord. And keep your hand upon me. Help me to be the person that you want me to be from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. How do you feel?